All right, we are one hour into our fantasy landscape composition assignment. And if I take stock and just kind of look at it overall, this is what I have so far. I have middle ground with still water, kind of misty clouds, and then high mountains with even higher mountain peaks behind it. The colors don't quite match yet. And then there's a sky with setting suns in the corner. And if we look really closely, this pays us off as a fantasy landscape. There's a little bridge and a little outpost. And this is the difference between screen resolution and print resolution. In a print, you would be able to see all of that detail. There's actually probably even people up on that observation platform but they are pixelated enough, I don't need to worry about them. So all the images that I have finished with placing, I've marked with green, but then I'm looking and then sometimes there's like little flaws in the imagery, right? But there's little patches of snow there. There's patches of snow here. That kind of works for what I'm going for. But I'll show you when we clean everything up, I'll show you how we can fix those issues. So I have to decide if I want to place this middle ground where it is or if I want to move it lower. You know, to go off of my sketch, it might be a little bit more like this. But I do want to show those lakes if I can. Yeah, so I think this is a pretty good placement. If anything, maybe even just a little higher, which means I can be more aggressive about erasing some of those clouds. So I'm even going to enlarge in my eraser tool. Remember, all the options are always up here. 0% hardness, 100% opacity. You might think, oh, I want it to blend and be soft, so I want a lower opacity. I want to do like 80%, 70%, 60%. The problem then is that you will always be leaving a trace behind. And it's what we call ghosting in digital imaging because it will look like there's little ghosts of edges left behind. So you do your first pass at 100% to get rid of the hard edges. And then if we want to, once we've gotten rid of that hard edge, you can take it down a little bit slower and I can turn this mist into being less opaque, but still helpful at transitioning. If I hit it in the right spots. And because this is all very organic, it's pretty forgiving. But when we adjust the color, that's going to really sell the illusion, the color and the lighting. And I'll do that in a little bit. OK, so we're going to call that one placed for that middle ground. But I have other middle ground assets I was thinking of using like this foreground hill or middle ground hill. So I'm going to turn on my sketch again. I'm going to use Command T, stretch this.
And right now I'm thinking of it as the hills in the middle ground for that tree to come out of. So maybe like right there. And then I'm going to duplicate it because I might use it also for the foreground. But right now let's just look at the hills. And the color is all wrong. This is more lit for like sun, for sunrise than sunset. But I'm going to grab what I want, grab a little too much of it, hit Command-J, duplicate it, turn off the smart layer it comes from, then get up close to it. And I want to get rid of that hard edge. There's a little house right there with a soft edged eraser at 100%. So I'm going to turn it back to 100%. Just start erasing away, blending from that, that hard edge that I just created. This tool is a little bit too big if I want to keep those bushes. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Because when you have a 0% hardness brush, the eraser effect kind of echoes beyond the brush size a little bit. I only want to get rid of the pixels I intend to get rid of. And even though it's a, a smaller brush tip, because it's at 0% hardness, it's still a nice soft transition just within a smaller area. And I can tighten them up after we do coloring. I have to decide if I want to keep that house in there or not. I think it's going to get covered up by a tree anyway. And it's not the right scale, so I'm going to get rid of it. I kind of like these bluish shadows. So as long as I get rid of the hard edge, maybe I can play with integrating some of that color. All right. So that's the middle ground. I have this other middle ground, which I think will help seam right here because this feels, just because of the reference, this feels a little awkward and soft and undefined. So I'm going to use this next one. I'm going to place this. The, the Painted Hills, as the photo was called. I'm going to use it in this corner. I might need to flip it. So Command-T, flip it horizontally. Kind of match the lighting direction. Turn on my sketch. Command-T. Let's see how I can integrate this. About right there would make sense. And now I want to erase out just what I need. So I'm going to do a rough lassoing. giving me a lot of overlap to work with, and then Command-J, turn off the smart layer, and then back to that soft edge 100% eraser. I can make it a little bit bigger again, at least 100 pixels. And this time I'm going to erase, well, let's see, let's put it behind my other one. There we go. Yeah, that can work. I'm going to erase the hard edges
And most of my background references have spanned the length of my composition, but this one kind of cuts off in the middle. So I also will have to worry about this transition a little bit. But it should be doable. As long as I get rid of those hard edges first. Okay. Let's consider that placed, even though its color is all wrong. Right. Next, there is the duplicate of this one. Well, here it is, that I want to use for the foreground rock. And I love these foreground grasses. So even though it's from reference that I used in another place, this is using it as a separate element. I'm going to rough cut around it. This will be a foreground element now. Foreground elements are the ones that take the longest to cut out because they're the ones closest to the viewer. And this is a nice looking element, but it will be a pain to cut out. But it's good to demonstrate the difficult stuff, not just the easy stuff. And the reason it's going to be difficult is because of all of these edges. Right? All these little internal shapes. If this was a sculpture in a milling class, those would be called undercuts. It's difficult to get a blade in there, right? But Photoshop has some tools we can use. And it's actually even hardly worth, with the foreground elements, softening it. <laughs> because so much has to be removed and sharply. So we'll learn how to use things like the magic wand, and we'll do all these kind of tight selections next time. But there are, are ways that hopefully will work pretty well. Okay. But I'm going to consider it. Well, let's see. Maybe that rock's too big. Do I need to shrink it a little? Let's shrink it just a bit. Okay, so we're going to consider that placed. This is why I recommend around around five, because once you start getting a lot of elements, it, it gets to be a lot of work and pretty confusing. But it's looking good so far. And now the trees. Oh, here's another foreground element. that I can throw in there. So this is getting ahead of myself a little bit because this is bigger than the tree or uh, more foreground than the tree, but I'll just quickly rough cut around these bushes. Thought they gave a nice, nice scale to the image. Duplicate that. So maybe that's something that can be worked with. Okay. So now the trees. Now this, this is.